What's up everybody and welcome. Today we're going over the top 10 things that you need to know as an outside investor going to Detroit. Stay tuned. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, uh, I'll introduce myself. My name's Alex Mack. My wife and I are real estate investors in Miami and most of our investments are in upstate New York. We've been doing fairly well with multifamily homes for the last two and a half years. Uh, but there just isn't enough supply for this to become something that's going to create the generational wealth that I'm looking to create. So uh, we started looking at other markets, including Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Detroit. We actually got so into Detroit that we got a realtor. Uh, we put an offer on a house, and halfway through, we found out some information that made us so uncomfortable that we backed out. So I'm going to explain to you why we backed out. We actually went to Detroit after we backed out to, to really get boots on the ground and understand the Detroit way of doing things, because um, it's certainly different than anywhere else in the country, and, uh, and I want to share those findings with you. So we'll start right off. Number one is how fast the neighborhoods can change. So this is something that's uh, very unique to Detroit, and I, I haven't seen it before, but you can be in a neighborhood in Detroit and literally see three blocks down the road. You're like, those houses look nothing like the houses that are around me right now. Their landscaping looks nothing like the landscaping here, and it just looks a little bit different. Uh, that's because that is the, the boundary to the town. So between one town to the next, uh, it can be within the block. Everything changes very quickly. So homes change, landscaping, security, uh, it, it all, uh, home values, it all changes very, very quickly there in Detroit. So that's number one. Just know where those property lines are or those town lines are and try to stay within those, those valuable towns that you want to be in. So number two uh, is despite all the things that you see online, all the movies and everything, Detroit is a really nice place. I, like we drove in uh, and the first place we went to was East English Village. And it was an absolutely beautiful town, uh, little place, probably you know 20 blocks by 10 blocks, uh, and it was it was just it was full of beautiful homes, Tudor homes from the early 1900s. All the landscaping was done really nice. It felt really really safe. And then again, 10 blocks the other direction, you could see a line where Morningside or where the next town was. That just was a little bit less nice. Sometimes the, the changes are, are more drastic, but all of that being said is there are really nice places to live in Detroit. It is not all of the burnt out homes and, and uh, crime ridden streets that you see on documentaries. Uh, so just, just want to put that out there. It was beautiful. I'll put some footage here while I'm talking of all the points that I make and, and just, it was really nice. So number three, there is so much money coming into Detroit right now. We are very new to this. So this is all, I wanna be very clear that all of these um, these notes, all these things that I'm noticing and telling you are things from a very newbie Detroit person. So I might be off, but these were my observations and, uh, and, and I just wanna forward them to you. So number three, there's so much money coming in, which is a great thing for a lot of people and, and not such a great thing for a certain group of people. So the the nice thing about that is there's a lot of teams being built there's a lot of outside investor groups uh that can help each other so everybody knows what's going on we're buying these houses that are that were kind of forgotten for a long time and we're fixing them up and creating really nice places to live for a huge community of people that, that want to live in detroit that being said there is a large community of detroit that have been there through all the bad times and now they're being pushed out of their homes because they can't, uh, they can't afford the increasing taxes or the values are too high or the rents are too high uh, and, and that's not such a nice thing, but it is the unfortunate reality when, when neighborhoods get gentrified and when, uh, when people put a lot of money. The other thing to add to that is that because there's so much outside money being invested, the city itself is investing quite a lot of money into the infrastructure of Detroit. So the neighborhood that we were looking at, Detroit just put millions of dollars into widening the streets, putting new sidewalks, putting new lampposts, really cleaning up the street and the infrastructure to make it look and match uh, the homes that are being renovated in the area, which is great. 
working together with the city to make everything kind of cohesive and a, and a very nice place to live. Number four is the ease of getting around. So the roads are not the best there. There's a lot of potholes. Obviously, Michigan winters are very difficult. But to get into downtown from much of the, many of the neighborhoods that we were in was very, very easy. I'm used to Miami, New York, Philadelphia, where I have lived for many years. The closer you get to downtown, the more congested the streets are and the, and the longer the amount of time it takes for you to get to that city center. So uh, I did not experience that in Detroit. We went into the center of Detroit, had a nice dinner, found parking. This was even on a night where there was a baseball game going on, which is sort of right in the center of Detroit, and uh, and we had no problem. So it was it was very nice. It, it didn't feel um, like we were sitting in traffic trying to get there, uh, which is a, is positive to me. Number five is eight mile. So from all the documentaries, all the movies, the Eminem, all of that, eight mile was this this war zone that you didn't want to be anywhere near. Even other uh, real estate investors would tell me, just whatever you do, don't buy near 8 Mile. So we naturally went to 8 Mile and wanted to see for ourselves what what was going on. We probably drove half of 8 Mile, um, sort of the center of Detroit, all the way to the east coast of Detroit, or the east side of Detroit on 8 Mile. And from what we saw, the roads were newly paved, there was lots of shopping centers, it was clean. I, I didn't see anything that was out of the ordinary. If, if nobody told me that that was 8 Mile, I would have thought it was just a normal road in any city. Um, it seemed pretty safe. We were there during the daytime, so I don't know if it changes at night. We also turned off and went into a lot of these little streets uh, that were connected to 8 Mile, and the houses were, were pretty nice. There was no... I just I didn't see it. So, again, take that 8 Mile thing with a grain of salt. Uh, maybe you want to stay a little bit south of 8 Mile. The further from 8 Mile you are, uh, I have seen that property values increase. So the closer you are to 8 Mile, uh, the lower the home values are. But, you know, 8 Mile was not as bad as we had thought. Number six is taxes. So from what we've been seeing, taxes are kind of a, a big range. If you're looking at a $40,000 home that you need to renovate and add some value to, those taxes could be $700 a year. So you're paying, you know, 60 bucks, 55 bucks a month for taxes, which is incredible. If you get into the better neighborhoods and you're, you're getting into property values of 100, 150,000, then you get into like the 2,500 to $4,000 range of property taxes, which still I think on a naf national average is probably pretty low. Um, for us, we are looking for cash flow. So property taxes, staying low is a big positive for us. And, uh, and we hope they stay that way. Number seven is there's a lot of outside money coming in, like I mentioned before. What that does is it makes brokerages team up with a lot of vendors and, and form these little outside investor teams. So you go in and you have a broker, you have a realtor, you have a lawyer, you have a title agency, you have a property manager, you have a GC, and you have a handyman. You might even have a house sitter that's all on the same team you pick one of those people and you have kind of access to the whole team. So, or so I thought, I'll mention that in the negatives. Um, I will give you a real life example of how that is not as good as it sounds in some scenarios, but um, we'll get there. All right, and now for the negatives. Uh, there are very few negatives here. I'm gonna go a little bit into uh, how I had to back out of a deal because of the way that my realtor and my broker were treating us. Um, put us in a really uncomfortable position. So I'll get to that. That's part of the team negative that I wanted to tell you about. But number one is it's very hard to find contractors. Something that's very valuable in Detroit is a team contractor that does what he says on uh, budget and on the time span that he says he's gonna do it. So there are a bunch of horror stories. You'll see them on YouTube and on the news of these Detroit contractors who make up an LLC. They bid out a job you pay them a deposit, they close down the LLC, they disappear, and then they start a new one and do it to someone else uh, that isn't in Detroit, can't knock on doors and figure it out for themselves. So just beware. I haven't found uh, contractors yet. It is something that's very scarce, something that when you do have one, you really wanna hold tight uh, and you wanna make sure that you don't lose them and you, uh, you really 
have a great relationship with them so they can help you because that's very, very important if what you're trying to do is add value to the homes that you buy in Detroit. Number two is highway driving is very unsafe there. It's very erratic and it's very uh, aggressive. I live in Miami where people don't drive very well uh, and I grew up in New York where also people don't drive very well and Detroit, you know, it took the the championship there, it, it, it took the trophy for um, people that just ignore red lights, that swerve, that are aggressive. Uh, that, with the amount of potholes and sort of the poor condition of the roads there, it, it's, uh, it's a negative. You know, it's, it's not something to stay away from because all major cities that are in the, the northeast or in the north have that kind of problem. But, um, you know, Boston and New York, they all have potholes and aggressive drivers and they didn't go bankrupt recently. So. Uh, and then the last thing I want to mention, it's a little bit of a, of a story, but I think it's important for you to have context and for you to watch out for those things when you hire a team in Detroit. So one of the things about hiring a team in Detroit is that they're going to want to recommend their teammates uh, for every service that you need. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not. I went under contract and I wanted a home inspection. I've done uh, many home inspections. I've closed on a, a good number of houses, so I kind of have the way that I feel comfortable. I don't go through the process of closing on a house unless all of the dominoes are in line and the first one doesn't go down until everything else has been checked out and I feel comfortable. So um, we got under contract. I wanted to hire a home inspector. My team recommended that I hire the husband of the broker of the team because he had uh, flipped so many houses that he has a really good idea on what's a good investment and what's a not a good investment. Now that may be true and I spoke to him and he seemed like a super nice guy, um, but what I wanted to feel comfortable for my first deal in Detroit was a home inspector that had no real uh, skin in the game. So obviously there's, um, there's a want for the house to pass an inspection if your wife is going to collect a a commission from me buying the house, right? So the husband of the broker is not gonna tell me everything that's wrong with the house because if I wanna back out, she now loses a commission. I didn't like that. Um, so I wanted to, to separate those things. I got a home inspector, he did a great job, um, but it was, it was very discouraged from the team because uh, it wasn't sort of in the team. And, and I didn't like that. So the home inspector came back, there was a bunch of stuff. I know that they go overboard with what they tell you is wrong with the house because they want uh, to do a good job. So I asked my realtor, hey, I have a few things that I wanna uh, get bids on. I still have a few days in my due diligence before I need to move forward with buying this house. Could you connect me with a GC or a handyman so I can start quoting out what certain things might cost so I can feel comfortable going to the next stage in uh, in this purchasing process, knowing it's gonna be five grand, 10 grand, 15 grand, or you know that's not fixable, run. Um, any of those things could happen and I, I just wanted to have all the information so that I could feel comfortable. My realtor said that because I did not purchase the educational course from his broker, which by the way is two to $5,000, um, that that information was not available to me. That, avail that information is only available to the people that purchase the course. I'm just asking for a handyman or a general contractor um, so that I can feel comfortable purchasing the house so that you can make a commission and we all win, right? But that wasn't the case. Um, they were safeguarding their vendors very closely um, and because I had not purchased the course, I was not privy to, um, to that information, to those vendors. So I backed out. Another reason that I backed out was because I had not been to Detroit in a very long time and uh, one of the things that was coming up was that a lot of vacant homes get their mechanicals stolen. So if you close on a house and it's vacant for a month or two before you find a tenant, there's a very good likelihood that someone will break into that house, steal your water heater, steal your furnace, and anything of value, oven, refrigerator, etc. Um, so you need to hire house sitters so that a person will not feel uh, as safe breaking into the house uh, because obviously there's someone home and they may be armed or whatever. Um, so hearing that, hearing that there was no hot water heater and no furnace in the house because 
um, they did not want them to get stolen, so I could not test them out with that home inspector was a big red flag to me. So a lot of these things happen. Um, they made me feel uncomfortable, and that's why I was like, let's fly to Detroit, let's get there, let's spend a week there, let's figure these things out ourselves um, so that we feel comfortable moving forward because, you know, if this was easy, everyone would do it. Uh, we need to figure out solutions for these little problems, and, and that's what we did. So long-winded way of saying, watch what these teams uh, are selling other than just their services. If I'm hiring a realtor, I want that realtor to be all on board uh, to making me feel comfortable purchasing a home in Detroit so that they make their commission and that we can rinse and repeat and keep doing this. If you're going to hold certain information uh, to the chest because I did not uh, get through this paywall of this online course that you want me to take, then you're not the realtor for me and you're not the brokerage for me. So I've already started speaking and working with other brokerages that want to educate people that are outside of Detroit so that they feel comfortable um, and I think that's the best way to do it. So um, that's the last thing I'll say. There's a lot of positives. There's a lot of opportunity in Detroit. We saw that firsthand. We feel way more comfortable uh, investing in Detroit and hopefully some of these tips and some of these observations that I had will make you feel a little bit more comfortable too. So Please comment, uh, subscribe, let me know what you think, if you have checked out that Detroit market or not, and uh, good luck. We'll talk soon.